for our, our very last talk now. It's going to be awesome. And 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 like here she is, or here she is. If this lady would love to love, like, introduce herself, obviously we're very very familiar with like sort of the like, DHC, one of the founding sort of members of like sort of like the sort of like, Transformers as well. And thank you so much for your time. And sorry, we like, slightly 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 run over, but you're our you're our you're our sort of headlining act. So you know, I, I take it away. And, um, <laughs> and I'm gonna I'm gonna have my I'm gonna have my note my, my notes ready ready as well. So please introduce yourself and like please start. Thank you. Well, now, now you put the bar very high to call me the headlines. So I'm getting nervous, right? Um, but thank you uh, for introducing me. Um, and I'm, I'm happy to give, I, I was happy to give more time to, uh, to uh, the great colleagues that were here in the, um, in the actual presentation before in the panel. Um, my name is uh, Mariella Noto. I will um, shortly start to share my presentation because I've prepared a presentation for you. Um, and I am a senior implementation manager of the ZDHC uh, Foundation, um, which is all focused, of course, on uh, um, eliminating uh, hazardous chemicals from uh, the textile apparel, footwear, and leather industry. Um, is that I'm happy to be here uh, today because we've been working a lot at ZDHC with Pakistan as well. Uh, and um, in my prior job as, um, as a supply chain manager at G-Star, Raw, one of the denim companies of the Netherlands, I was also working a lot with Pakistani suppliers, who I now encounter again in my work at ZDHC. Um, I'm implementation senior manager, and I'm responsible for um, the ZDHC Academy, which is an educational platform. Uh, so it's very nice to be in contact with students. Um, and uh, I'm also working on international projects that relate to implementation of sustainable chemical management in supply chains. Now, uh, because I'm not sure who uh, uh, all know exactly what ZDHC is, I always start, start with a small introduction. Um, now, of course, I also hope that the, the video technically works. Uh, I've tested it multiple times, so uh, it should be working out fine with sound. If not, do let me know. Clothing meets a basic human need, and it's also a way to express our personal style. Who doesn't like to have some fun with fashion? But we rarely stop to think about how our clothing choices are impacting the planet. In many countries, making clothing and footwear still involves the use of harmful chemicals. A decade ago, Greenpeace challenged the industry to start tackling 11 of the most toxic chemical groups. Soon after, the Zero Discharge of Hazardous Chemicals Foundation was born as an industry initiative of brands, manufacturers and chemical companies collaborating to remove and replace these toxins. So how did they start? ZDHC initiated a mind shift, expanding the focus from consumer protection to also protecting the workers and the environment in the production countries. In addition to a restricted substance list, RSL, banning toxins from the finished products, ZDHC introduced a manufacturer's restricted substance list, MRSL, banning hazardous chemicals from the production process. So what has ZDHC achieved so far? The most recent data shows that 98% of tested facilities in our sample have no detections on the 11 hazardous chemical groups identified by Greenpeace, which reflects that those chemicals are no longer intentionally used by the ZDHC community. A community that has grown from 6 to 30 brands and 150 contributors in total. 100% of brands are committed to implementing the ZDHC MRSL and more than 80 testing labs around the world have been approved. In short, the groundwork has been laid for better chemicals management, but ZDHC's job is far from done, because the textile industry is huge and real impact requires collective action on a global scale. So what's needed next? ZDHC will continue to grow its community, increasing convergence so that more manufacturers and brands follow the same MRSL. ZDHC will continue to train stakeholders in sustainable chemicals management along a complex supply chain and raise awareness among consumers because it's our fashion choices that will make the biggest impact. After all, we don't just want to look good, we want to feel good too. It explains all about ZDHC, so I can also explain it in a nutshell. Um, because ZDHC is focused on eliminating hazardous chemicals from the, the textile, uh, leather, footwear, and apparel industry. 
Um, we do this uh, by looking at the whole holistic approach of chemical management. Uh, so not only um, chemicals that come, come out of the supply chain, but also those chemicals coming into the supply chain. And that's, of course, a very important part in relation to, um, uh, to how a product is being developed and as well what kind of input we have when, uh, uh, when a factory is discharging his wastewater or air emissions. Now, this does have a connection to climate change as well. Um, if we look at the definition of climate change, it's all about long-term change uh, in, um, in the Earth's weather patterns and um, also local, regional, and global climate changes. Now, we just saw from earlier videos as well, there, there's been issues this year in Germany, in the Netherlands, flooding all types of situations. Uh, we had actually, I think, 18 degrees at Christmas, one and a half year, uh, two years ago. Uh, temperatures for a country where we normally like ice skating in winter are a bit strange. Um, so we, um, so climate change is about those changes that we observe in our uh, in our climates and in um, that we run into in our human activities. Um, now, a lot of those changes are in, um, related uh, to uh, to greenhouse gas levels, and that is something that with the production also uh, within uh, the facilities, we can actually have a look at how to improve. And it does also take into account chemical management. Um, now, if we dive a little bit deeper into, um, into climate change and chemicals. The fashion industry is considered a major source of CO2 emissions and has a lot of urgent work to do. A report by McKinsey recently showed that in 2018, it was estimated to be responsible for 2.1 billion metric tons of greenhouse gases, which is around 4% of the global total. Now the industry has set a target to reduce its annual CO2 emissions to nearly half of that by 2030. As a multi-stakeholder initiative, we at ZDHC carry out the responsibility of meeting this urgent call by impacting each stage of the supply chain and for every level of stakeholder. Through smart, sustainable chemistry, we can reduce carbon emissions. One good example is making radical improvements in the dyeing processes to color the cotton garments. By promoting the use of alternative, safer dyes, 50% less energy is used in producing finished cotton garments. Full of confidence and commitment, ZDHC and our stakeholders will rise to the scale of the challenge of climate change. Join these positive changes throughout the industry. In the video that we play, and we, I will also share a link with you later to where we all host these videos as at the HC, uh, we show the impact of um, the use of chemicals on uh, actual climate change and greenhouse gases. And with eliminating those hazardous chemicals, we can actually um, make changes. Uh, if we look at types of things that we could do to eliminate these changes, it comes also to uh, changing our processes and our way of thinking when we are actually producing our garments. Um, that could well be uh, with looking at uh, dyeing processes that we do. How can we uh, use different types of dyes? How can we actually uh, run different types of processes? Uh, um, uh, not, not as long as we knew, normally do, but cut the processing time uh, using less energy, less water. So there's all different types of ways how we could actually also by using different types of chemi chemicals uh, reduce processing times. Um, when we actually develop a certain garment. It does, however, mean that we also need a paradigm shift. And I think some of the prior uh, speakers um, you know, from the industry already explained as well, um, there is a lot happening already in the industry. There is a lot of brands that are looking into how they can actually make improvements in their own um, uh, production circuit um, and in their processes. Um, but is it actually already um, shifting into action because we see a lot of shift in thought. You know, we see it everywhere in the commercials, in all the things that uh, brands are setting up. But do we also see that reflected in the actions that they're taking? Um, and um, how does that work? Is it well enough aligned? Because I think one of the very good points in the previous panel was uh -uh, we might need a little bit more alignment to be able uh, to get any further because otherwise continuously we run into all these different requests from brands, from other organizations, 
um, by which we are still not having one uh, similar approach. And that is also a little bit where ZDHC comes in. The Agenda Roadmap 2020 comes to an end and we are celebrating the release of our first impact report. The industry has changed a lot. A lot more people have gone from talking about greenwashing, talking just about social compliance, to really seeing how can they fit sustainability in their DNA. We want to move forward. We need to start from the same kind of page. Circularity is a must. That is the future of fashion. But to make it happen, everybody needs to work together. So we're really connecting the dots here between uh, designers uh, that create the impact by designing the products and the input chemistry. If we put good chemistry into the product or into the processes to make the product, you'll get good output. So good output could mean clean air, cleaner water, cleaner product. What we do see is that there is, by now, an impact of sustainable chemical management um, in the supply chains of, uh, of our um, brands and that we also see that brands are committed to make changes. Um, they, however, have realized that that is not something that they can do by themselves. Um, so I was very happy with the panel that was just before me where I saw some of the uh, um, chemical industry colleagues um, because working all together within that very big value chain that we have worldwide is very important um, as a brand or as a material manufacturer or as a chemical uh, formulator you cannot tackle this topic by yourself you will need collaboration a lot of transparency a lot of discussions and good alignments if not in the end wherever in one of those lines in the value chain it will go wrong because we just need each other um, and that is something that that we've learned um, and that we also try to improve more and more to tackle those very big challenges if we look at the current industry uh, we see that um, uh, there's been a lot of changes uh, and a lot of plans to tackle uh, some of the um, the biggest uh, greenhouse gas challenges so in 2018 the fashion industry was responsible for 2.1 billion metric tons of greenhouse gases, which is around 4% of the global total. Now, that is more than France, the UK and Germany are actually producing combined. So that's a lot. So that also means that we need to step up our game and start to work on this topic very actively as, as an industry. As a response, we have set within the whole fashion industry a target to reduce the CO2 production to an annual emission of 1.1 billion metric tons by 2030, which is a bit scary because we're in 2021 right now. So that means that if we look at it, we need to be in around nine years time at half the figure that we were in 2018. Will we succeed? I mean, we're up to the challenge. The, the fashion industry has taken uh, the first steps, but it is a very big step to make for going from 2.1 to 1.1 billion metric tons. Fortunately, we do have some support as well from um, the, let's say the higher governmental levels. So, I mean, it's not a problem that we as an industry, as a fashion industry can tackle alone. It's a worldwide global problem, and it's also related to more than just fashion industry, but to other industries as well. Um, we're backed up, of course, by the Paris Agreement, signed by more than 178 countries, that does target to control the global average temperature rise within two degrees, and which also um, has stipulated points on greenhouse gases, of course. Also, the European Parliament has uh, increased its plans for 2030 and 2050. And China also gave their um, uh, confirmation that they want to be carbon neutral by 2016. All these global plans help us as a ZDHC and as an organization and as an industry uh, to move forward with the plans to actually um, uh, lower those greenhouse gas emissions also within the fashion industry. What does that mean for uh, chemical management? Um, well, there's different types of solutions that we can think of. So we can think of uh, changes in technology. Um, I know that 
some of the panelists before here, also Andrea, uh, but also Miguel said, you know, we see lasers and we see different types of uh, R&D improvements. Um, so there is technology that can be used to improve those levels of greenhouse gases. Um, the type of products that we produce and how we actually uh, set up the production in phases and the processing, um, making changes and look at uh, possible solutions for that can actually also improve the output of the greenhouse gases. The same goes for changes at the factory level itself. And with that, you know, a complete and complete change within the mindset of the supply chain of the value change that we're working in. So we have to look at all these elements to be able to, in the end, make an overall change in, um, in how we use chemistry within our industry, as well as how that um, has an impact on what comes out of our supply chains. Now, how do we try to align? Um, we already heard in the previous panel that it, the, need, the need for alignment is big and also towards the chemical companies. Um, so at ZDHC, we decided to work with all these different stakeholders um, to discuss and talk to each other how to improve uh, the use of safer chemical management in our production chains. Um, we have our labs on board, certifying companies, technology providers. We talk with the chemical manufacturers, the garment makers, the dye houses, tanneries, but also with academics and governments and the brands, of course, and the retailers. And together, we try to align on how we can best make those improvements in the chemical industry, which also sometimes means that we need to stay, take a step back or rethink things or have a look at if safer chemistry is indeed safer chemistry. Um, so, for instance, the chemical manufacturers uh, have a place within uh, a management board that's uh, a council where they can also discuss their challenges when it comes to the requests coming out of the industry. And I think that is very important uh, to keep that discussion open and to keep um, engaging with all these different parties to improve sustainable chemical management on the ground. Our mission as an organization is to um, implement widespread chemical management. And we try to do that with sharing a lot of different guidelines and solutions for the industry itself. Um, so our, um, our guidelines and solutions need to be hands-on improvements for facilities uh, to do on the ground. Um, we also train those facilities and, and we give them support with the implementation. But in the end, it needs to happen at the factory level. And that's of course the most important um, points that we work on. Um, in that sense, we try to uh, guide the value chains uh, towards the use of that safer chemistry um, for a cleaner planet and um, as well for that brighter future that we are all looking towards. Um, and as said by one of our uh, team members, we can protect the planet by reducing industry's chemical footprints. That, works, that means working hand in hand with the entire value chain, so with everybody in that value chain, and collaborating with all the different parties together on this, the shared vision. And with that, you create a path forward. Um, that does not always go you know, as smooth uh, uh, as you wish it to be, but that's normal. And um, that's also something that, that we, uh, as an industry, need, need to be open about. It will not be just changing overnight because this has been happening already for a long, long time. So in the end, why do we actually really need to, to manage those chemicals? Um, well, for one, and it's, it's one that we come across, of course, a lot of times, is that we need to address the concerns from buyers, consumers, and other stakeholder parties. Uh, consumers who might end up with products that still have chemistry in them or have an effect, for instance, on their health. Um, buyers who want to make sure that they um, work uh, you know, with the right regulations and um, are not um, uh, tech or are not um, uh, working against the law, let's say. Um, but we also want to learn with man managing those chemicals what the actual hazards are that are associated with these chemicals in the manufacturing process. If we know what the hazards are, we can also look at the potential solutions. And of course, we need to take a greater responsibility for the health and the welfare of the existing generations. Um, so with man managing chemicals, with improving uh, chemical management processes and, and the input management uh, at facility level, 
we also take the responsibility to have less output at the end stream of the production process. Um, in short, of course, the actual harm that some of the uh, chemicals can have is actually quite extensive. Um, it is not only harm for the environment by you know, uh, discharges of the factory, um, sludge, wastewater, um, air emissions that uh, end up in the end in the environment, and also consumers using products that can actually, uh, by laundering, washing, end up also again in the water. Uh, but it's also the worker health that we need to take into account. Workers actually being exposed to these hazardous chemicals in the facility um, and working with them on a daily basis, chemicals that can be bad for their lungs, their immune system. So we want to make sure that all these um, uh, topics are well managed and covered so that we can lessen that impact both for the human health as for the environment. And I draw I, i've drawn that little loop because in the end it all works together if the environmental exposure is too big then in the end it will indeed of course also impact human health again um so like i already said a lot of different pathways where you can actually see um uh, how chemicals are uh, being exposed into the um and end up in the environment uh chemicals after the, pro uh, the production process can end up in uh in the water and the sludge that's going out of the factory, which in the end causes soil pollution. Soil pollution, and it's all about this chain of events, I would say, soil pollution in the end can also, again, um, uh, pollute crop. Crop can pollute our food. So it's a whole chain of events that then starts to happen, which in the end has an impact on everybody in our daily lives. The other way around, same happens with air emissions or wastewater. Um, air emissions, you know, end up, yes, you know, um, above our heads in the air, but with the rain, it comes down again as well uh, into the aquatic, uh, into the seas, into the, uh, into the wildlife, into the soil again, affecting aquatic organisms. Um, I don't want to scare everybody. And of course, um, you know, it's always, if you see this in one slide, you're like, okay, hmm, maybe not such good messaging, but it's happening. And uh, that's why, of course, we are uh, working so hard uh, with all these organizations to improve uh, the output coming out of the uh, manufacturing facilities. So which processes can we see uh, where chemicals are used within um, the textile industry, uh, for example, and then the manufacturing? Well, there's a lot of different uh, scenarios where these chemicals are used. Uh, washing, scoring of fibers and yarn, uh, dyeing, mercerizing, printing, finishing, you name it. All these um, processes use specific chemistry. And next to that, and I think um, also Alberto already mentioned, also for instance, commodity chemicals being used in a facility, um, and, uh, chemicals that you are used for cleaning uh, of, um, of machinery, um, et cetera. So there's a lot of different types of chemistry uh, or of chemicals used and uh, all have a certain uh, impact on the environment. As one of the last um, slides that I want to show, um, this is actually how we try to work as an organization to um, uh, work towards safer chemistry uh, for the industry. So we want to have a look at the whole uh, scale of, um, of the process. There's a lot of things you can already do at the product design stage. Um, if you consider water and energy consumption, uh, if you consider the type of material you're using and choosing, if you consider the type of coloring, dyeing, finishing, when you design your product, you can in the end already have an impact on what types of chemicals are used within the production process. When that is uh, tackled or not tackled, it depends. Um, we look at the input chemistry. So which chemicals are actually going into the facility being bought by the uh, by the facility and um, are they uh, well recorded uh, well used and uh, well uh, stored etc when coming into the facility that's a very important point because what we always say is when it does not come into the facility it doesn't end up in your end product if if your management process is is um, is appropriate um, we also look at that management process in between. So if there's chemistry, a safer chemistry use, or even 
um, uh, certain chemicals that might be uh, still hazardous, how are they being used at the factory level? Um, are the, the right management systems in place? Are they used uh, by the workers in the, in the right way? Are they stored correctly, transported correctly, et cetera? Um, so are the processes within the facility up to date to manage the chemicals well? And then last but not least, we look at the wastewater side. So if things come out of the, if the chem chemicals are being um, uh, cleaned up by the, um, by the treatment plants, uh, at the end of the whole stream, um, you know, when we test the wastewater, uh, what does the sludge look like? What does the wastewater look like? And what, how does the air emission, um, uh, what does the air emission look like? To see how much is still um, uh, remain, well, how much still remains in that output stream. And looking at all these different elements and trying to control and manage all these different elements should in the end also lower the impact of, um, of the chemicals coming out of the facility. Now, when we use these safer chemicals, um, I mean, we looked at all these different uh, topics, you know, uh, inputs, outputs, uh, we looked at air, we looked at water, uh, we looked at sludge, uh, worker health, um, we try to, uh, of course, um, clean up the industry. And with that joint effort, we also hope to connect to certain sustainability goals and um, achieve uh, and support um, the efforts of achieving these uh, um, sustainable development goals. Um, now we um, uh, start a few of them because those are the ones that we are direct, uh, directly um, looking at when we're looking at our impact. Um, good health, for example, life below water, um, and life on land. But there's of course also a lot of side effects because um, if the health of a human being is better, then it also improves other areas. If, um, uh, if uh, for instance, the quality of education is very good, it might also create, um, it also might uh, impact, for instance, decent work and economic growth. So there's a lot of different uh, goals that we actually try to, try to include in our efforts, uh, if not directly, then via the sideline. Um, now, as an organization, just to explain uh, how we try to, uh, together with all our uh, colleagues and in industry uh, partners, try to um, improve. Um, the chemical management within the fashion industry. We've uh, we've have set up a, a little booklet, uh, detoxing the fashion industry, uh, which also uh, is shared for everybody uh, within the industry, including you know fashion lovers, students, brands, whoever is in, interested. And um, it's all about uh, okay. So how uh, can we develop? How can we look at innovations? How can we tackle our obstacles? So if you're interested, you can just download it from, uh, from the website that is uh, specifically for uh, this booklet. And um, you can have a, have a read. It's actually a nice uh, bedtime read before you go to sleep. Um, and with that, before I thank everybody and um, say something about follows and Instagram, et cetera, et cetera, and look at their nice little movies, um, I just wanted to say that for me, as a, uh, on a personal level, it's very nice to also be engaged with students because um, as a ZDAC Academy, um, we are trying to get more and more acquainted with, uh, with the type of knowledge that students are uh, looking for and longing for in their career to be able to develop further on this topic. Um, and we are also looking to engage with universities, et cetera, uh, all over the world to give them um, a support in, uh, in building pathways for students to uh, move towards the industry. So, Actually, also a small call to action at the end of this session. Um, if you're a student and um, you think it would be very nice to collaborate with us uh, and your educational body or the university you're at, um, feel free to reach out to us because we would love to discuss this as well uh, with you and, um, and for instance, your uh, university or professors to see how we could actually work on the topic as well together. And to get some good insights on it so um with that thank you how awesome was that and i've got look, i've got like four questions on my phone there's another three questions on on, on the q a so let's go let's um let's unshare your present your presentation I'm here. yeah and then uh let's go for it so i've got some questions thank you again for that and, and um you know, chem chemicals and water i i, I remember seeing a doc I, I remember seeing a documentary as a young child and 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 I was blown away by the fact that 
actually most of the oxygen doesn't come from trees it comes from plankton in, in the sea so yeah. these are things that they don't half the time talk about so all the damage that our industry does obviously companies like kaiko self are doing a wonderful thing by trying to educate and help people to understand what good and bad things we should should be doing let's go straight to the to question sort of the, sort of the questions question number number one uh how how to use the right chemicals and how how can it be like monitored so obviously for a fashion designer they're, they're very well for the people that are watching this they're very much like removed from you know a lot of the chemicals and discussions that we've been having in the last two like sessions because they yeah. just see the garment at the end but how can it be, be monitored the, the chemicals that we currently use and should be using um well, what, what I would like to say is, I mean, of course, well, first about, you know, what type, what is, you know, what type of chemical should you use, you know, and, and what, how do you know if it's a hazardous chemical or not? Right. Um, and that's a, a, a quite a practical question that I could, that I could answer with the fact that as an industry, together also with the chemical companies that were previously in the call, um, we created a, a, a manufacturing restricted substance list, hmm. which is a list with all chemicals that we don't want to be used intentionally in the production process. So if you look at that list, which is actually, we can share the link afterwards for students, right. as well, which is a link that you can just go on on the internet, um, where you, you can find all chemistry that we don't want people to use intentionally. Um, so it's, it's basically just a search table. Uh, well, that's yeah. what, I mean, that's how you can find certain chemistry that you don't want to use, right? Um, monitoring, uh, if they are used, that is of course a whole different story because that would mean that you have to go into the factory, look at their inventory, mm. if it's in store, um, if, if a hazardous chemical is in store, they need to replace it. Right. Um, so it's that, and we do have a structure for that uh, by now. So we do have a way um, uh, to ask manufacturing facilities to list their inventory and to cross check that with you know, a list of, uh, of chemicals that should not be used. Uh, but it's a step-by-step -step process. And um, there is, for instance, one uh, chemical supplier, if you talk about Pakistan or one uh, mill who is doing that uh, very actively, which is our artistic milliners, mm -hmm. uh, known to a lot of uh, people on the call probably as well, um, who actually they do that. You know, they take that chemical inventory list, they match it with our MRSL, and they see which chemicals are you know, approved or not, and which they have to uh, um, then in again uh, change for a more safer chemistry. Yeah, we got two of the artistics that are joining us to, to jo uh, joining us tomorrow actually. So yeah, Ooh, we're very much yeah. friends with them. Great um, team. Yeah. yeah second, second question. Um, how what kind of actions is like Z Z Z D H C taking in in, in like fostering climate change? Obviously, you mentioned about the UN like sustainable goals or all, all seventeen, which you're you're practically like ticking the boxes of near, nearly all of them, but what are you doing as a company to try and really tackle climate climate change? Yeah, I think one of the major things that we're looking at is how indeed, you know, by talking with all these different parties, how we can um, set up tools that can reduce certain impacts. So um, uh, not only looking at uh, innovations that we could potentially use within the supply chain, because we have a lot of different innovation teams and research teams in our group, uh, but also, for instance, building a resource efficiency module, which, uh, you know, looks at, okay, so how can we actually reduce energy impacts and wastewater impacts or water use impacts, um, mm -hmm. as well as looking at which chemistry we should be using and um, sharing that as well with all our contributors um, that will uh, have less impacts um, on, for instance, using uh, water and, uh, and energy when you use them in production. So um, it's the side effects of changing your chemistry that we uh, that we look at that in the end um, impact as well. Um, okay, uh, last question off my phone. Um, uh, where's again? Uh, yeah, what's your opinion on nasty nasty chemicals in in like denim, like hyper hyper hyperchlorides or chloride or chlorides and like and obviously PP spray. So what's your yeah yeah opinion? yeah. Oh God, I, I said to Miguel the last time, I never hope I get these questions because there's always a personal side of me and a business side you of me. You have to answer it. Students asked it now. So you, I just wanted to say it's a student's <laughs> asking. No, so um, I think for me, it depends. I have these discussions a lot with, with you guys as well. You know, what is right, what is wrong. Um, some of the chemistry in denim, uh, in my opinion, uh, should be replaced or improved. But I also see that some of the ones that if we would actually exchange them might um, run into, you know, safer alternatives that have other side effects. Yeah. 
Yeah. So for me, it's, it's another, it's another evil. Basically. It's like a like sort of, sort of, sort of another uh, I got like another evil. So you're replacing it with yeah. another. Hmm. So it's a continuous balance that I'm I'm trying to uh, to look at. So I don't have a um, uh, in that sense a very clear opinion yet because I'm still trying to figure out, especially with some of the denim chemistry. Uh, what is good and what is bad. Um, we do have, uh, just for everybody uh, here to know, we do have SZDHC and a line now on our candidate list, but even our MAC, which is our MRSL advisory group council, is not sure yet 100% what to do with it. Okay, one last question. I've been told to, to, to sort of wrap it up. Um, which medical tests are necessary to ensure the health and safety of their workers? Hmm. This is an interesting question from a yeah. very interesting question. Well, what um, what we always advised also in the past when I was still working in the supply chains, actually on the ground, but that you at least bi yearly have to make sure that um, you have your your workers do uh, health checks where in relation to their lung capacities, um, if possible, even lung function, you know, photography yeah. things like that. Um, their blood tests, um, all, all those kinds of things, just bi-yearly do those tests to see if, um, especially when it comes to, you know, uh, the vulnerability. But ideally, the, the company, like the factories that employ them should do these tests for them, right? It shouldn't be something that they yeah, bear. Those. Normally the factory and the bigger factories do have that in place. They have their yeah. doctor team in place or they make sure with insurances that the workers can go yearly or bi-yearly um, to, um, to a facility or a hospital to actually have those main, uh, main uh, things checked. And they often do check them more often when you yeah. work in the chemical storage, for instance, or in processes that are more uh, impacting your health than uh, the ones, for instance, being behind the sewing machine. So there's a difference, of course, as well to who you test how, how often, but uh, especially I think the lung function tests and things like that are super important to deal with, uh, with the workers. Yeah, yeah no, um, well, well, thank you so much. There are two more questions here, one from Zaki and, 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 and like another one as well, which I can see that sort of like Miguel is actually answering on your like behalf. But um, thank you so much for your time. And, and it's really yeah, nice. Well, it's such an interesting like, topic because these are, this is a topic which is really far, right, sort of like, sort of like removed from any kind of fashion design, only textile students who might do some dyeing might know about some of the chemicals that yeah. they when a when a fashion designer or designer like me buys fabric, you know, we don't ask the most of us don't ask the questions about what kind of chemical has been used on that fabric, what kind of chemicals should I use when I wash this like fabric or sort of fabric. And yeah. these are the things that we rely on factories and the supply chain to do for us. So yeah. we you know it's it's a strange one because I know in the food industry you have tags on everything, you have labels and everything and when you buy a fashion garment, does it say if it's used a certain chemical on it or you, you, you should wash it before you even wear it or all these kind of things. So these are things that are- It starts, I, my, just a very simple private story. My hey, Miguel, that poor Maria, she's, she's, stuck, she, she's stuck in time. She's, I really wanted to hear that personal story of hers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know what happened with Mariela because the connection was good all through the, the presentation and all of a sudden, you know, she she's frozen in thank, that position. Thank, thank you again to her. And, and, and obviously yeah, sort of the company is one of, one of, one of the founding members of, of, the, of, of the foundation. So it's quite important that we got specialists like this helping us and helping our students, which is awesome. Um, well, CDHC is, uh, is, is the most important organization in terms of uh, chemicals, control of chemical substances. Um, some of the things that Mariela mentioned about the uh, MRSL, they are critical for the, oh, Mariela is back, great. Yeah. Oh, hey, we lost you, you're, you're, you're still muted. Sorry, if you can unmute yourself. Our internet in the office has just been cut off for two oh, seconds. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> 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 we depend too much, we depend too much on technology, I mean. <laughs> Yeah. Um, but thank, thank, thank you for your time. You are our headlining act. So thank you so much. And it's a very really tough subject um, that you've it covered. Is. And obviously, these are, I'm sure there'll be lots more questions afterwards throughout the week where people, people always ask chemical questions in, in, in like the wrong panel. I, I always find. So it's, it's nice that you've uh, spent <laughs> time with us today. Mariela, what I would like to, to, uh, to, to tell the audience is that you are on the implementation hub and you have the academy. So you are expert on educating people and training people on that. So, um, you know, if, if you are intending to do uh, uh, an academy session in Pakistan next time, we can, we can pass around 
all the contacts to the to the to the people because uh, this is for for all the students and all the all the professionals that are on the on the call. Uh, these academy sessions are very very important. Uh, it's, it's very important to understand the complexity, the best way to handle chemicals, the, the, the ways to monitor, the way, I mean, the, the list of, uh, you know, um, things to be tackled, the in-check program, the, 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 the clear water, the, everything. And this is something that personally I recommend very much to go for the academy and attend the, the presentations by SFDH. They are the masters on, on these subjects. Yeah, and like I said, happy to have everybody, also students who say, you know, we would like to do something with our uni, you know, contact us because we're always prepared to set something up. And I think it's super valuable indeed. I think, yes, the, the, very I think the very first eds that we did do were actually, actually physical events like pre-COVID. And we've got used to these uh, Zoom sessions. I'm actually quite excited to have a have an auditorium again with five to a thousand students yeah. and uh, lots of different colleges. So hopefully we can come to Pakistan and all over the world and do physical events uh, sometime next year. Um, Hopefully. Awesome. Thank, Thank you so much. Uh, yeah, fingers crossed as well.